I was going, folks. So, being in uh, the gun debate for quite some time, namely on the internet, what I've noticed is a number of foreigners like to chime in on U.S. gun laws, U.S. gun culture, and our Second Amendment. Now, there have been a number of them that actually have been very supportive of our gun culture um, that like our Second Amendment and wish they had one themselves. And I do feel for those people because I wish they could have that too. And in fact, I don't think our government respects the Second Amendment as much as they should, and I wish more governments would have a lot more respect for their individual citizens' rights to keep and bear arms. On the other side of this is that you have a number of foreigners that want to chime in, and they absolutely either don't understand our gun culture, or they're outright hostile to it. Now, right, hate our Second Amendment. And they want to see us uh, have our guns taken away, uh, just the same as their countrymen are disarmed. I know I'm not going to change their opinions, obviously, but I'm hoping maybe somebody in the middle, or maybe undecided, or open to new information and new perspective sees this and is possibly influenced by this. I know it's a hope, but got to try. So, uh, first and foremost, I'm going to discuss the gloves. Just got through cleaning my guns. Don't want to have to clean them again, so that's why I'm wearing the gloves. And yes, I will be using firearms as props in this video. I'm not Alec Baldwin, guys, so you don't have to worry about me accidentally shooting you. So, that being said, let's start with uh, one of the major misconceptions that I want to address. And this is the idea that we in the U.S. live in fear that, you know, today might be the very day we get gunned down or, you know, sending the kids off to school this morning, uh, we might not see them again because they're going to get gunned down in the classroom. This is an absolute misconception. This is a uh, lie, even by the people who profess to live here and profess this is their absolute fear. And the way you can tell is because <clears throat> you don't see these people immigrating from the U.S. to Canada or Europe or any other place where they might have these common sense gun laws, you know, did something about their mass shootings or something of that nature. In fact, it's usually the other way around. You got people immigrating to the U.S. Uh, furthermore, even within the U.S., you don't see mass migrations of people from, say, Wyoming or Texas or Florida, where we have a little bit more permissive gun laws states like California or New York where the gun laws get more restrictive and outright prohibited in many cases. These people who make that claim, well, their actions contradict their words. So with that being said, I think we can put that misconception to rest. Carrying firearms for personal protection. You see, in the U.S., we have that option, and some of us do exercise that option. Pistol, when you're going to the grocery store, when you're going to work, or just going about your everyday life outside the home, it makes sense to carry one of these. Not because you're anticipating having to use it that very day, but in the off chance that something happens, now you have the tool to be able to protect yourself. I mean, ask yourself this question right here. Um, you knew for a, a sec that you were going to have to defend yourself that very day. Which choice would you take with you? The knife or the pistol? 
I don't know too many of you in your right mind who would take the knife or the pistol, you know, with the ammo. But the fact of the matter is, is a criminal can use either one to kill you. But you know what works best against both? Have the pistol yourself. Much easier to use one of these to protect yourself against a guy wielding one of these than it is to use one of these to wheel, uh, protect yourself against a guy wielding one of these. And that's just the reality of the situation. While I'm at it, I do want to share an old proverb I heard. Basically, it comes from the Far East. Teachers teaching their students about warfare, how to be a warrior, how to wield a sword, how to shoot a bow and arrow, um, all this other stuff. And of course, he's also teaching their student the importance of living in a peaceful civil society when possible. One of these days, the student finally broke down and said to the master, Master, look, you teach me all this stuff about fighting, but then you constantly speak of peace. What is the deal with that? And the master said, my student, it is better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. And this is absolutely correct. It's better to be prepared to be able to deal with violence uh, than to be unprepared and have the violence deal with you. And it's funny because anybody can listen to that and say, well, yeah, that makes sense. But then do the complete opposite in practice. Which doesn't make sense to me. And we've had uh, recent events show us again why gun control is, is a bad idea. Take, for example, what happened uh, recently. Well, now it's been a, probably a couple weeks now in Israel. Israeli government knew Hamas is a violent uh, organization that they kill civilians indiscriminately. And yet the Israeli government thought it was more important to have their gun laws put in place against their population than for their population to be able to defend themselves. And many civilians unnecessarily paid the price for that. If the Israeli government would have simply not had those gun laws in place, and allowed people to be able to own rifles such as these, that attack that Hamas had perpetrated would not have been so effective. Even if their citizens were having to use these to protect themselves against Hamas, that attack would not have gone near as well for Hamas as it did. More innocent people would probably still be alive today had the Israeli government not decided, well, we don't want to be like the U.S. with a gun culture. And speaking of which, even having guns for fun, I have this pistol here solely as a, a collectible, something to shoot at the range for fun. This pistol is all recreation. Making it a more of a headache for me to be able to lawfully own this pistol, legally own this pistol. That ain't going to stop crime. Taking this pistol away from me taking this particular firearm away from me is not going to make you any safer. And I imagine, you know, there are a lot of you outside the U.S. that uh, 
you look at your neighbor, you think that they, you know, would turn any more violent if they had a firearm? Taking your neighbor's firearm away, does that make you any safer? I'm going to probably guess not. You know, the thing is, is that if somebody was a uh, homicidal maniac, well, them having the gun or not having the gun is not going to change them being a homicidal maniac. That is, that is an individual person's problem. The difference is, is that I and those people in the U.S. like me get to enjoy a freedom with a lot more ease than people in other countries do. I mean, great general purpose rifle, really smooth rifle to shoot, really accurate, um, really fun to shoot. And I have the option of follow-up shots, if need be. Again, <laughs> you know, it's a really nice uh, rifle to have. You know, and it's, uh, I'm glad that I'm in Texas, where I can walk into a gun store, fill out my 4473. In my case, I've got a license to carry, so I don't even have to get the next check. Uh, walk out with this rifle the very same day. There are certain states in the U.S. even you can't do that. You know what? I think the NFA is unconstitutional garbage, but you know what? Here in Texas, I at least it's still after I've jumped through the hoops, be able to get myself an SBR and a suppressor. And build the rifle almost uh, to my liking. Now, obviously, uh, can't get a post 1986 uh, fun switch, no matter how much I try. Unless, of course, I wanted to get an FFL. And then, really, even then, that post dealer sample is not going to be mine personally. Technically, be property of the business, but, and, and there's a whole bunch of other restrictions with that, too. But hopefully one day that restriction will be repealed. It just can't come soon enough. But to further uh, discuss what I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that we have a freedom that uh, a lot of you in these other countries do not have. Or we're able to exercise the freedom uh, a, a lot more and a lot easier uh, than people in other countries. And no, it really hasn't cost us any toll in life. The homicides in this country only happen in a handful of counties believe it or not, then when you look at other countries in the world, uh, a lot of these other countries, their homicide rate dwarfs ours. This is something the gun controllers don't want to talk about. And by the way, all these countries that have these massive homicide rates also have prohibitive gun laws. So with that being said, I'm hoping this is gotten some people who are not in the U.S. or even in the U.S. thinking a little bit more. Um, maybe get to see another side of the discussion. And in any case, you guys have the comment section below to let me know what y'all think. Anyway, thank y'all for watching. Y'all take it easy out there and have a great day.